Hi everyone, it's Jamie Broderick from Network Now and Above the Crowd. Welcome to our masterclass with Natalie McNeil. I have to read because there's so many things that she has done. She is the author of The Conquer Kit and Conquer Your Year and a forthcoming third book coming out, I think, next week. Incredible. Um, she is the creator of SheTakesOnTheWorld.com, which is an online source for women entrepreneurs that was recognized by Forbes as top 10 websites for women. It was the 2013 recipient of Website of the Year at the Stevie Awards for Women in Business and was featured by Forbes Woman on top 100 websites for women. women. So I would say go check it out. <laughs> she takes on the world.com. And uh, mostly today, Natalie and her team focus on transforming businesses through the Conquer Club, which is the program, the full year incubator, which I've been a part of, very gratefully been a part of for the last 12 months. And you've probably seen her quoted in the media. She's been interviewed everywhere on top media outlets, Glamour, People, Style Watch, Forbes, Forbes Woman, Wall Street Journal, CNN, Entrepreneur.com, Globe Mail, Globe and Mail, Mashable. The list goes on and on. You can stop there. All right, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I'm Jamie Broderick. I have none of those accolades, sorry. I've, I've impacted dozens and dozens, maybe thousands of women by helping them start and grow and build their businesses. And I'm all about connections and access, and Natalie's all about strategy and systems. So together, we are unstoppable, which is why I wanted to partner with her. I am a proud member and now par affiliate partner of the Concord Club. And the topic we chose today was how to close out 2016 and plan for 2017. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One is because if you're spending your whole day doing tactics and not, don't have a plan behind that, it's not going to get you where you want to go. You may not know where you're going to end up <laughs> or maybe nowhere. More of a hamster wheel thing. And the other reason is that I see a lot of women entrepreneurs who get stuck in the overwhelm they don't know what to do next they wake up and not sure and they just kind of react as their inbox fills up and their social media ding dings all day long right so let's get a plan together huh <laughs> what do you think about the topic today natalie well it's one of my favorite topics obviously and it's the last two books that i've created are really built around this because I do see way too many entrepreneurs getting stuck in their businesses and really having no time left over to work on the business. Um, I see too many people get stuck at, at the ground level of things instead of taking that eagle eye view of everything happening, which is really where the entrepreneur should be operating most of the time. And I feel like there's a big disconnect there right now. Most people are working on the ground and they're not up in the big picture. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about your two books that are out and the third one that's coming, if it's not a secret? Yeah. And maybe your magazine too, which I'll share the magazine link in the chat. Go ahead. Yeah. Take so my, um, my whole thing is having the plan for the next 12 months, but then I'm always about breaking everything down and making sure that there are systems in place for what you're creating. So the Conquer Kit is the book that came out uh, at the end of last year. And this is a 12 month business planning workbook. Um, it's colorful, it's kind of fun, it's creative, and it takes you through um, everything from four pillars of success and systems to marketing plans to um, really checking in on your finances and creating better financial plans for your business. So the Conquer Kit is that 12-month planning workbook. The book that's coming out on November 15th is Conquer Your Year, which is the planner for the Conquer Kit. It's like the next step. So this I'm really excited about because it's how I work. And I think everybody needs to get into their own rhythm of work, a rhythm that's going to serve you because we don't all work the same. But what I've done with Conquer Your Year as a planner is made sure that there's a lot of space for you to 
incorporate your own rituals and make it your own. So the sprints that I know some of you have done inside the Conquer Club Business Accelerator, this is how I work. I'm always working in sprints. Conquer Your Year is divided into quarterly sprints for the year. And a sprint layout looks like, let me open one for you. A sprint layout looks like this. So you see that? Might be a little small on the screen, but um, you're looking at your big picture milestones that you said, and we lay this out in the Conquer Kit. You are looking at every task. So one of the big mistakes that I see people make is that they have these big goals and they can get them on paper and they know what some of the milestones are, but they're not all tasked out. So what we always do on a quarterly basis is look at what is that next big goal that we're going to tackle over the next 12 weeks. Um, and we're usually tackling one big thing in a 12 week period as a team. And we look at every single task that is associated with a goal and get it into a project management system. So we have space for that. Um, there's a content calendar in here as well. Content marketing is a huge part of a lot of our businesses, whether you run an agency or an online business or a product-based business, and then it all gets broken down day to day. So that's the Conquer Kit and Conquer Your Year, um, those two books that go together. And again, it's like the whole planning system, which we can definitely dive um, more into and we can take some questions around that as well. Because I think if you can structure your year in a way where you're breaking it into four clear parts and there's a 12 week period where you're sprinting towards something and then at the end of that, there's a week for reflection and catching your breath before you dive into the next sprint. I have found that it is one of the most effective ways of working and that has been validated by quite a bit of research that has been done. And it's the way that a lot of people will, a lot of very successful people will work. Yeah, very good. If, if you look at the bottom, there's a, a button where you can hit the chat. And I put the link to her new Conquer magazine in the chat. Okay. And what is the, there's another book coming out next week, Natalie? Is this true? No, if Conquer Your Year comes out next week. Oh, Conquer Your Year comes out. Okay. Yeah, that's the next book. The next, next book is not until the end of next year. Okay, I know you've <laughs> talked about a third one. So. I know, there, there were three books all in a row, so I know that they're hard to keep track of. It's hard to keep track, yes. Okay, <laughs> well, as most of you have heard, Conquer Club has been the reason behind the pivot I've had in 2016 it has just clarified everything for me and you've seen a lot of the changes that have been going on um, and if you watch that cleaning lady video you'll hear more about it <laughs> oh, I want to um, share my screen and just before we get into the content and open this up for questions I just want to show you what why I'm so jazzed up about Conquer Club Besides, of course, you're going to be blown away by Natalie's answers to your questions, but let her just go through really quickly the structure of the program, and then we'll bring it back and get into the content, all right? Has everyone here been part of the Conquer Club Business Accelerator? Has everyone worked through a sprint, or are there some people who have and some people who have not been part of that experience? Who, show of hands if you did not do the accelerator. Okay, so we're like 50 Half and half, and there's okay. a couple on the phone, so I'm not sure. But. That makes sense, yes. And I can definitely take more questions around the planning process, the sprinting process, because um, that's really what we do inside the Conquer Club and how I've structured these books. It's creating a whole system and a foundation so that you can get a lot more done in your business and achieve those big things that you want to achieve. It's great. All righty. Look at that. It didn't blow up. <laughs> so yeah, I'm happy to tell you a little bit about the Conquer Club. And I'm sure you've heard a little bit about it already from Jamie. And I just want to stress a few important things about what makes us different because it's not a program. It's not curriculum based. It's very much a 12 month coaching experience 
similar to what we offered inside the free business accelerator for the last two weeks. So it's built around a series of live coaching calls where you get very personalized support on exactly what you are working on. And that's one of the things that makes us very different than other things that are out there in the market. We call ourselves an incubator and not a program. So what you'll find inside the Conquer Club is pretty unprecedented. Um, if we can just go to the next slide, you know, we have over a hundred classes that are available on demand. We're like the Netflix of business training and everything is organized for you into tracks and we have those sprints. So let's say you're working on implementing systems for the very first time in your business. We have resources for you for that. We have a track for that and a checklist that you would be able to go through to work through the Conquer classes that would be best suited to you and your goals. Um, we don't expect you to get through everything. It's very much tailored to what you need when you need it. And the experience inside the Conquer Club is mostly built around the live calls, as I was saying. So I think um, if you could just keep moving Mm -hmm. through that. I'll go through these quickly. But we have 20 office hours calls with me throughout the year. And again, on the accelerator calls, it would be a similar system where I'm taking a lot of questions, but not just taking questions. I'm opening web pages, sales pages, um, graphics that have been submitted. I'm giving very specific feedback to our members. And this is what makes it an incubator and not a program because you don't get that uh, in other programs. So we also have new from 2017, the Million Mark Mentoring Calls. And these calls are with someone who has reached seven figures plus in their business. And most of them do not even offer coaching outside of the Conquer Club. And they cover different industries, um, agency, a product-based business, a software startup, um, all that are doing over a million dollars in revenue. So we're going to look at their journey from zero to a million and getting that behind the scenes look is something that I believe can help anyone at any level of business. It doesn't even matter if you're working towards a million in revenue or not. We also have our community that's available at 24 seven. It's an incredible community, so supportive. And you can usually get an answer for whatever you're working on or whatever you need very, very quickly. And we also have an amazing community manager, um, Kelly Azevedo. She has been the COO and system strategist behind several seven-figure entrepreneurs, many of who you would probably even know. Um, she has 43 implementation trainings and she hosts live calls to help you actually implement and get things done. She is brilliant and our members absolutely love working with Kelly as well. And then in the inner circle experience, we take things one step further with mastermind groups. And we also have at this level of membership, um, our get it done days. And the get it done days are full day virtual workshops with either Kelly or myself. And the things that you can get done in a get it done day would be, you know, you could bring a draft for a sales page and we can go through that back and forth. It's similar to how we are on this call uh, right now, but it's for an entire day where you can hop on, hop off. If you wanted to create a Facebook ads campaign, we could help you with that throughout the whole day to set it up properly um, to save you so much time and so much money by just getting it done right. And I know so many different strategies and approaches for my several years of running ads and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on Facebook ads. So I know what works and what doesn't. So that's an example of something that you could get done. If you wanted to hire somebody for your team or bring on a virtual assistant, um, Kelly has so much experience writing those job descriptions, helping you post that job, set up the interview questions. So there's a lot that you can get done in a get it done day. We had somebody um, finish her book proposal and agent query letter and actually land a, a deal with an agent um, following working together on that proposal. So I have a lot of um, expertise in a lot of different areas that I can apply to your business at this level. 
And finally, we have a two-day retreat in Napa, California, June 6th and 7th. And that's also part of our Inner Circle Conquer Club experience. And I do have a fast action bonus right now on the Inner Circle where um, if you're a new member and you sign up before Friday, um, tomorrow, what is that, November 10th um, at 11.59 p.m., you also get a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with me. And I used to charge $1,500 for those. I was always booked up months in advance. I don't do them anymore. Um, but I am doing a bonus one-on-one -on -one session as well if you're in before Friday at the inner circle level. So that's more about the Conquer Club and what we're offering. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have um, about it. And I'm really here to answer any questions you have about planning and your strategy and making sure that you can hit your goals. Okay. Well, why don't we start with some mistakes you see and then some tips on how to close out. Because if we don't do anything right now to plan for 2017, all of a sudden it will be January and we'll be like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> like the holidays will be here before you know it. It's only okay. seven weeks till the new year. So what do you suggest we do before Thanksgiving? Okay, so show of hands if you would say that you did achieve pretty much everything that you wanted to achieve in 2016. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you're maybe a couple head tilts. Okay. So on the other side of that, show of hands if like you didn't quite get done what you wanted to get done in 2016. Okay. And this has been a very distracting year, I will say as well. Um, I think a lot of people, at least a lot of people that I've talked to, I've been out on my book tour um, for the last few weeks, and I've. I've spoke to and have met with thousands of entrepreneurs in the last two months. And it's been a hard year for a lot of people. Um, I think the election in the US was a, a very big distraction. I'm figuring out um, as I travel around the US, a lot of people got very caught up in that and caught up in a lot of negativity and, and just didn't feel like they were as productive as they usually are. So if you're feeling that way at all, that is something I'm seeing across the board. The reason why people usually don't get the things done that they really wanna get done is because there isn't a plan in place for getting it done. So if you look at the system that we use at my company, we will sit at the beginning of the year. I usually set no more than four or five major goals for a year. I don't wanna to have too much on my plate. I like to stay very focused and the system that I use in my bigger picture planning process is setting those goals and then breaking it down into five major milestones to keep us on track toward the goal. That's usually the part where people can, can get through that. They can get through those top level goals, the milestones, and then that's where people tend to get stuck. And here's what I see most often. People will, okay, let's say one of your big picture goals is to launch a new product or a new service. The milestones for that might be creating the, you'd have to create the product or create the curriculum or create the service, whatever it is that you're planning on launching. You would have to put together the marketing plan. There would probably be some nurturing involved in that to prepare for that launch, to build a list, to build more buzz before the launch. So things like that would be considered the top level milestones that you would be working toward. But within that, you have to break it down to every single, break it down into every single small task that, that would be associated with that. And this is where people do not go all the way on the goal setting and planning process. So if I am preparing for a launch and we are doing a lot of list building ahead of the launch, if we are um, gearing up for multiple emails to be going out, in this case, we did three different sprints that we offered for people within the accelerator. So each of those three sprints needed their own email sequence needed their own videos and worksheets. And that was a ton of work that my team started working on back in January. 
every single email as part of that sequence and leading up to it. Um, we had about 60 emails in total for each sprint, so like 180 emails. Those were put into our project management system as draft one for the email. Feedback for each of those emails was a separate task. Doing the final draft for each of those emails, a separate task. Creating the graphics for each of those emails, a separate task. Sending the email out, a separate task. So it's easy to see how you could end up having thousands of tasks associated with the goals that you want to achieve. And that's always how it is for us, but it's something that we're working on for the entire year. So when I'm at the beginning of the year and we have thousands of tasks, these are things that are going to be done in the next month. These are things that are going to be done over the next 12 months. And it's not just me, it's a team. So if you're, not in a situation where you have a team and you are working solo, you may not have that many tasks. But this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see entrepreneurs make. And I think this is why things feel so overwhelming. And for some people, having a few thousand tasks would feel overwhelming, but actually there's a lot of peace of mind that comes with that. Because you know what you're doing every single day. And if you get off track, you can easily see how to course correct and get back on track. You can always remove one of your big goals that you would set for the year. You can move it into the next year. But I find what people are doing on a day-to-day -day basis is so reactive. And when you're not being proactive toward the things that you want in your business, that's where I see um, a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck and end up not achieving what they really want to achieve. So having that whole system in place, getting really organized um, is what can help you to push things forward faster. And I will say that if you are feeling stuck now or feeling like you didn't get done everything that you want to achieve, I would look at the rest of this year as one big sprint. Like what is that one thing that you can get done for the rest of this year? And I would just pick one major thing and break it all down task it all out for the rest of the year so that you know week to week what needs to be done. And if you can do that, that's what gives you momentum for the other things. And this is why I also like working in sprints and setting like four or five big goals to achieve in a year. Because if you're staying focused on one thing, having achieved one big thing gives you a lot of momentum to go into the next thing. When you're working on everything at the same time, and again, you're reacting and thinking, oh, what can I do to move this forward? But you don't actually have all those tasks. This is like by far the biggest mistake that most people are making. Yeah. I would, um, you know, last year when I started, one of my big goals of the five by five that you had us create was to actually create the foundation to support everything I wanted to do. So if you don't have systems and structure in place, that might be one of your goals is to implement all of those systems. Can you talk a little bit? I think a lot, I see a lot of people that don't have processes and systems. Can you just define that for them? Yeah, I mean, that's why, that is why we do what we do because, and this is also why I invest in having somebody like Kelly part of the Conquer Club experience. Um, she's not just managing the community, but she has been the system specialist behind so many large businesses. Systems are so worth your time implementing because you can automate so many things today. And when you automate things, you're not just saving a chunk of time up front, you're buying back future time. So some of the systems that we have in place for things that we used to do manually could save us a few minutes every single day. A few minutes saved every day over a period of a couple years is a lot of time. And you can be putting systems in place. Here are a few that I recommend that people start with. I think everybody needs to have some sort of booking system if they are a service-based company, especially. So if you have clients, if you're, if you're selling, let's say, a package uh, online. Let's say you have a marketing strategy package and it's on your website 
if you are going back and forth with people around booking that, it's probably not a good system. What you should have is a sales page around that product or service that you're offering. You should have a questionnaire. So if you need to do a discovery call or something first before somebody would actually purchase, you should have a questionnaire that people can fill out so that you can pre-qualify them as the right lead, as the right fit for you to work with. Once they fill out that questionnaire, if they do qualify as your perfect client and they have the budget to work with you and you've identified that in the questionnaire, then you can have a link go out for them to book the discovery session with you uh, or that free consultation and that piece can be automated as well. So you shouldn't be going back and forth with people talking about what you can offer or how much it would cost or getting on a call with somebody who isn't actually a qualified lead. Like just that kind of system alone can save you thousands of dollars. And then once you're off that call, the next system that I recommend having in place is an onboarding system for clients. So everybody needs some sort of onboarding system to set up that relationship. And this is usually delivered through a few automated emails. So when you sign up to work with us, you're going to get a few emails that go out that slowly explain to you how to get the most out of the experience. When you sign up, we also have your um, address that automatically gets sent off so that a gift can be delivered um, to you. And that's a system that we've created so that we're not having to follow up with someone and be like, hey, by the way, can I get your address? And then having to manually go and send that gift. So again, we're just always trying to save ourselves hours and try to save ourselves minutes as well. So that's another really important system to have in place. And the other, the other system and, and foundations that I would love to see people set up just is around batching, like whether it's batching uh, content or if you create videos for your business, anything that you can do in a trunk um, is a really good system to have because then you can get things scheduled to go out. So we work several months in advance and we have that system in place so that our correspondence is all scheduled to go out and it's not something that we have to be working on um, day in and day out because content is a huge part of our business as it is for a lot of businesses today. So there's so many things you can do to create more automation and create more systems and Again, this is why we have like 43 systems and implementation trainings inside the Conquer Club because there are so many other things you can be doing too that just save you so much time and money. And again, you're like buying back time from the future, which is one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, it's excellent. I'm going to unmute everyone so we can just talk a little bit about goals, planning, the task management and systems, all right? Yeah, and I'm, I'm happy to speak about anything really. Um, if you have any questions outside of just the planning and systems process as well. So feel free to ask me anything. You're all unmuted. Well, I'll jump in. <laughs> uh, I, as, as a writer and as somebody who is kind of stuck behind a computer all day and I'm trying to build um, an audience, there are so many ways um, in which you can do that. I mean, obviously, there's the social media thing. There's putting up videos that show me speaking. There's, I mean, I, I could make a list of 100 things. Um, do you have any thoughts on how to refine almost where to start. I mean, I have my foundation pieces in place in terms of the, um, the books are out there. The website is finally up to speed. There's a, a media sheet, which I refined based on some of your, your <laughs> recommendations the other day. Um, but it's almost overwhelming to think of, okay, well, now what? What's going to get me those speaking engagements? And any one of those kinds of things are valid, but where do you, where do you pick, where do you start? So where are most of your people coming from right now? Um, it, you mean in terms of speaking engagements and things like that? It's, yeah, it's so like speaking engagements and when you talk about building that audience, like where, where does that audience usually 
meet you right now, whether it's like Facebook or like, do you have a strong newsletter that you're sending out with engagement there? Well, I guess that's the interesting thing. I just put out a newsletter. And again, for the last year, I've been working on the foundation pieces and getting my, my website presence um, up to speed to where I was really confident in what I was putting out there. So I guess the issue becomes that at this point, it's been through social media, um, but it's, it's certainly nowhere at the growth level that I want it to be. So it, you know, there's there's little bits and pieces coming from a lot of different places. How do you make the decision of, of where to approach people? Yeah, I think to make it not so overwhelming to start with, you need to look at what platform is going to be best for your audience specifically. And for some people, like I know some people who generate so many leads through Pinterest. I know other people who generate so many leads through Facebook. So it really depends on your audience and, and those demographics. But I do strongly recommend that everybody build a mailing list and be collecting emails because you never know when things are going to change. And you can't rely on a social media platform to be the main connector between you and your audience because Anything could change and you would not be able to reach those people anymore. For example, if I didn't actively build our list from our Facebook following, I would have woke up one day and be like, uh-oh, I can't actually reach any of the people who are following me on Facebook without paying for it. Because I used to be able to put out a post and most of the people who were our fan on Facebook would see that post. And now that's not the case. If you're a business page on Facebook, you need to pay to reach the people who are following you. So if we wouldn't have built that list, we would have been in a situation, and I know a lot of other people in the situation, where they can't reach those people. So I think one of the best things you can do is be building that list. Now, how do you build the list? You build that by channeling, taking your social media following and trying to funnel them into that list. Um, I do believe that advertising is a piece that a lot of people are not currently doing. A lot of people are not spending money on their ads or spending enough money on their ads. And just to put this into perspective with my mastermind group and with myself um, included in this, if I'm working towards a revenue goal, usually I'm going to spend at least 20% of what we're hoping to earn revenue wise on our marketing and advertising campaigns around it. So I talk to a lot of people who are like, well, I would love to make a hundred thousand dollars on this product launch. And I'm like, okay, great. So it's probably going to cost you $20,000 in marketing and advertising to make that happen realistically. And if somebody comes back to me like, well, I have a budget of like $1,500 then usually there needs to be an adjustment of expectations. So I think that Facebook ads have worked for us um, in a miraculous way sometimes, and it is how we've built a lot of our list and community. And I think it, it also is engaging with people, like what kind of content do they want and making sure that you're delivering that value on a regular basis. So I still think that Facebook is an amazing channel um, and it, it does depend on your audience. I know that some social media platforms would be better. Live events too. I mean, if you are speaking and it sounds like you are, um, what I do for the live events that I am speaking at is I'll have a landing page for those events. So let's say I'm speaking at the Extraordinary Women Conference. Um, I will have a landing page, she takes on the world.com slash extraordinary women, and I'm actively inviting people to come and join our community and our list. And that's usually always step one of my relationship with someone who would maybe eventually um, work with us. It's, it's often at an event, it's through ads, it's through organic engagement on social media, it's by... Um, commenting on certain blogs and websites. It's responding on platforms like Quora and Medium to questions that come in there to, to drive more leads to a landing page 
And the list building efforts though is, is the number one thing that I would recommend. Like you've got to be building that list. And those are just some of the ways that you can plug people into that list and into that funnel. And when they she just, says, when she says build, it, it's a matter of converting them, right? To, to a yes. list list. Okay. Yes. So if you're speaking to people on all these different platforms and you're only speaking to them there, that's when you know that you definitely need to be bringing them onto a list because again, a social media platform could change at any time. Look at what just happened with Vine. Twitter's shutting down Vine and there were people who were Vine stars. Mm -hmm. There were people who had a huge following, millions of followers on Vine and Vine is shutting down now and that was their main platform. Right. Well, that sucks for those people. If they've actively been building followings on other platforms and putting them into some sort of list and building community around that. Right. And then from there, it's a matter of nurturing people to eventually convert them into a paying customer, which is where a nurture sequence and regular content comes in uh, very handy. And I think that's the best way to actually engage with people. And it's a lot of work to do that. And this is why batching is so critical. So with social media posts, sit down, write a month's worth of content in one sitting and get it scheduled using a tool like Hootsuite. Yeah. And doing batching like that will just save you so much time and money. And then it, it just takes a bit of time. A lot of people don't know that uh, I've, I've had She Takes on the World going on nine years now. And when I started, I, I started consistently creating content. And I mean, now we have a pretty large following and a pretty large list, but I've, I've worked for that for almost nine years of creating content every single week. And when I look back at the people who also had websites, who also had blogs at around the time I started She Takes on the World, the majority of those people are no longer in this industry because they just stopped creating content along the way. They stopped doing the right things to continue to serve people. So I, I always believe in the, the uh, long game and not just looking at the short term and, and building those relationships and value over time. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it gives me a starting point, like where to go next. So thank you. Yeah, no, list building is something I, I strongly recommend for everybody, no matter what business you're in. All right. It's the lifeblood so, of a lot of businesses today, that list. Yeah. So three key takeaways. Take, engage with your audience on social media, move it off of there onto a list. Have an, something to offer them other than a subscribe to my newsletter button. <laughs> Look at what Natalie offered to get you on her list. She offered a two-week live accelerator, right? We, yes, I would say that we <laughs> offer a lot more than most people do. We put in a lot of work there because it's worth the effort for us. And another thing to keep in mind is that <laughs> When you build your list, remarketing is cheaper than, um, than going after a cold audience with your ads. And what I mean by that is once we have our list and we can upload our list to Facebook, it is cheaper for us to retarget people already on our list and to keep those people engaged than to be reaching cold audiences through those ads. And that's a strategy that I recommend for a lot of business owners today as well. So there's a lot that you can do with that list. Yeah. Can I ask a stupid yeah. question? Yeah, there are no stupid questions. Go for it. Thank you. Engaging with social media in order to get them to sign up for something that you're offering them. How do you do that? You just yeah. ask? Yes. Sure. Um, and you don't ask too often. I mean, there's a lot of value that gets provided in between the ask. But if you are providing value and you're building that trust with people, 
when you say, by the way, I have this free experience that I'm offering right now, you can sign up for it here, or I've got this free download, you can get it here. People know, like, and trust you, and they're going to jump into that. So it's basically giving them the opportunity to make the decision to sign up. You don't ask them, would you sign up? You offer them something and let them make the decision. Yes. So gotcha. one of the things that we're doing now with our content marketing strategy is every time I'm putting out a new video, we are doing some sort of actionable download to go with it. So for us, it's an easy ask to say, hey, I've just created this video for you on the five systems you need to implement in your business. And by the way, we have an implementation uh, download where we're giving you the checklist of everything that you need to make this happen. Um, you can get that here. So it complements what we're already offering and it's a no brainer for a lot of people. It's like, well, of course I want the download that's going to help me implement this. That makes sense. Really good. And I think a lot of people get stuck on always offering the same opt-in offer and you need to change up the offer. I think it needs to be a combination of live training and events, downloads, um, even short courses and things like that. I see a lot of people just offer the exact same thing to data and eventually you're going to get stuck there in my opinion. You're going to stagnate in terms of your growth. And one of the other things that this allows us to do is see what people are wanting. So we can tag people in our system. Like if, if somebody is always clicking on our meditation content, but they don't like any of the systems content, we can tag them that way in our system. So now we know and have a, a sub list of all the people who love our meditation content. We have a sub list of all the people who love jumping into our free live training experiences. We have a sub list of the people who love systems and implementation. So you can start to get really, really specific if you are offering different offers and starting to segment that list because now you can target different offers toward those people, right? So if I have a, okay, so the Conquer Kit that came out last year, we had all the actions in that book to download um, free trainings that go along with the book. And because we did that, we now have a very engaged list of people who are the perfect people for buying the planner. So it's good to get super specific in who, uh, who you're targeting and how you're targeting them to make sure that you're giving people exactly what they want. And if this all sounds complicated or overwhelming, <laughs> this is why we work with people for an entire year. This is why I don't believe in just offering a six week online program where we throw a lot at you and then don't actually help you implement because I think that that's a big problem today. Um, and this is why we're with you for a whole 12 months because it takes time to transform a business. It takes time to set up these systems. You can't do it all overnight. You can't go off and implement all of this stuff in the next couple weeks. It might take you a few months to actually get all of this done. And I think, Jamie, you're a really good example of that. Because when I look at what you've done over the last 12 months, you have done a lot, but it's been gradual and over time. Like back in February, when we were starting to talk about some of these things that probably needed to shift in your business, they weren't done by March. Like these are things that are, are now being implemented or relaunched or updated in the business. Oh, I can't hear you. Are you on mute? Sorry. Yeah, I was muted myself. Um, that's so true. And in all the ideas that she gave Mary Fran, for instance, for having a, having a landing page for an event that you're at, that's one thing to focus on underneath one of your milestones would be to create that for your upcoming speaking events, perhaps. Mm -hmm. You just focus on that sales page. When that's done, 
then you want to talk about what you're, maybe you want to work on one opt-in. It's like, but working with Natalie and her team, it gives you clarity on what to work on first. And in her calm, wonderful manner, not it, you don't get overwhelmed because she's like, okay, step one, do this. Here are five things you should do for your website. Come back on next month and we'll see where you're at. <laughs> and we put it back up and then she'll come up with some more things to change and update and improve. So it's not like she's you're expected to do all of those things. It's all about taking the consistent baby steps. I'm like, you can do all of this on your own. You can go off and do it on your own. But trust me, it's a lot easier <laughs> to do it with other people and to have that support so that you can get it done faster and get it done right and be working on the right things at the right time. Because I think there are, there are a lot of people who are not always prioritizing what they should be prioritizing in their business. Right. And I'm not the only one that loves the Conquer Club. So just really quickly, let's share, um, let's share some of the testimonials. Get down. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I'm going to mute everyone except for Natalie. Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. And that's your link, okay. uh, the bit.ly slash Conquer Club 20 or Conquer Club 17 is your link, right? Look at that. Yeah, I figured that out this morning. I said, I'm going to customize my bit.ly links. So, yeah. All right. So let's share some of the testimonials just so you can see I'm not the only one that's a fan. Yeah, we can go through these quickly. I mean, if you go and check out everything that we're offering at the Conquer Clubs, if you if you check out Jamie's uh, link and then come through and see what we're offering, you'll find hundreds of stories and videos um, from our members. And I think you can move through these pretty quickly, uh, Jamie. We have a very strong community and we have a community that is really achieving a lot in short bursts of time. So we get comments like this all the time. I made as much in my first, um, I think that one from Caitlin was my first month um, in the Conquer Club than I did for like my entire first year in business. And again, it's all about those smaller steps that uh, add up to really big things. Uh, Nicole is another great example. Um, she tripled her profits and she wanted to be able to cover all of her family's living expenses and the private school fees so that her husband could um, grow his business as well. And that's exactly what ended up happening. We, um, oh, this one from Mary. I know Jamie, you know Mary very, very well now. Um, we have a whole team of mentors and experts from different industries who have built their businesses in different ways because I don't believe you should ever get all of your advice from just one person. I think it's a dangerous way to run your business. And this is why I bring in experts from different industries. It's why I bring in people who have built million dollar businesses. It's why we have an implementation team to support you and to help you. We can go through these ones. Uh, Toya's another one. She had left her her job and, and she's a lawyer. And, yeah, as a lawyer. Uh, Victoria, yeah, my confidence to make it happen came from the Conquer Club. And we hear that a lot. Um, I think sometimes people just have a lot of blocks and there are a lot of mindset issues that come into play when you're building a business, especially when you're living in your own little bubble and you're not surrounded by other people who have your back and who are working towards similar things as you are. And entrepreneurship can be very lonely. It can be very isolating. And I think you need that tribe. Definitely. And you'd get two this way. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk about my bonus offer because I believe so much in the Conquer Club and I want to make it an easy decision for you. So the first thing I'm giving away 
is um, three months of elite membership in Network Now. Because as I said earlier, I think the combination of my connections and access to influencers with Natalie's strategy and systems coaching is just going to make you unstoppable. Here's the great connection right now. I'm connecting you to Natalie, so let's start with that. <laughs> I also am going to add in an hour business strategy call, which can be used any way you like. If you wanted to use it on how to best implement the Conquer Club or Network Now, we could do that, or it could be on any other topic. And if you're, you are an elite member, you know what the coaching calls have been like. We always get a ton done in 15 minutes, so imagine what you'll get done in an hour. And then I'm also going to give you free access to my new digital program, which is right now in beta, beta mode. I have six people in there. Um, slogging through what I'm coming up with as I'm building it. And once it's finished, you will get access to that in early 2017 for free. And then I'm also throwing in, like Natalie's throwing in in the inner circle, the Napa retreat. Well, I'm throwing in a ticket to the Florida retreat. Just so I put a little sand and surf there for you to give you a good visual of what it's going to be like. So the whole the Above the Crowd Live retreat in Florida on January 18th through 20th is all about reaching higher, moving forward, thinking bigger, just stepping into your greatness. Future is bright. I use those terms a lot because that's what it's all about. Ever since I've been in the workforce back a long, long time ago when I used to manage departments, it was always about pushing people to their potential. It's just in a different format now. It's with women entrepreneurs. But I used to work in the corporate setting, and I'd have a staff of people, and there I was in my 20s, um, and I'd be managing people in their 50s who'd been doing the same boring entry-level job forever. And I'd push them. I'm like, you can do so much more. You are smart. You're a problem solver. You're a leader. I'd have them writing journal entries and learning new software, and they were hating me. <laughs> But by the end, they were wearing their little stickers on their hands, so proud of themselves, writing me letters about how I saw the potential in them. And it's like, why I do what I do. I love it. So um, the Florida retreat is included in your bonus for the Conquer Club. Not, yes, not the travel, not travel costs, but it's a no, but that, That's pretty unbelievable. Yeah. Isn't that great? So it it's really going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Is blown. <laughs> So there you go. Let's get back on screen here. So anyone have questions about Conquer Club, about 2016 planning, 2017 planning? Let me unmute everyone. Because now you've had a little time to process all that Natalie has shared with you. So perhaps you have a specific question on what your next move should be, perhaps, to get ready for next year. I think, Chris, Kristen, did you have a question? I did. I actually had. Um, oh, there's two out. Kristens. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kristen was asked first. I'm sorry. I Kristen will go there. over to Kristen Kane. Will go over to you next. Okay. Thanks. So my question was regarding if you offer services and you rely on other people to also complete tasks, but they're not as timely. Do you have any recommendations? Um, because if they're behind and you're on schedule, you have your, whether it's and there's only so much to go around. Any recommendations for venting, uh, what's a good word to describe this, um, bottlenecking of every oh, their clients? Clients, okay. So it's very collaborative what I do. So I'm, I guess for all intents and purposes, we are teams, but it's a client environment. I guess it could be more aggressive. Okay. So just to make sure that I fully understand. So a problem might be that you need something delivered by a certain time from a client and the client is not delivering on time and therefore it's holding you back from being able to do your job and then deliver that back to the client. Correct. Okay, so there's a few ways that you can solve this. And I had to do this in my media and production company quite often. I think part of this is the client onboarding process that you lay out and making sure that there are mechanisms in place that follow up with the client. So you have a deadline coming up in one week. You have a deadline coming up in three days. And 
we would have mechanisms in place that would follow up with the client. We also have implemented this with other Conquer Club members where the system is somewhat automated where um, one of our editors, for example, she needs people to be writing and handing in their stuff on time. If she's going to be editing their book, they need to hand in chapters on time because if not, she has another client booked and has to work with this other client and she's still waiting on stuff from the client who she had blocked time off for and then they didn't deliver. So there are mechanisms in place designed to follow up with and coach the client through actually meeting their deliverables. And oftentimes you need to implement a penalty when it is going to hold you back from doing the best job that you can for all of your clients. So if I've blocked a week of my time off because I need to work with a client after they have handed something in and they don't hand that in, that is a week of my time that I'm losing. And what we did was implemented nominal penalties. And it's amazing how many people will get stuff done on time when there is that penalty. And this is what's happening now with the editor as well. Um, with the penalty in place, fewer people are missing their deadline because they know that it's going to cost them, as it should cost them, because you've set aside the time to work with them. And I feel like that's often the best way to solve this problem as challenging as it can be sometimes, because of course, once in a while, somebody's going to be upset about it if they miss the deadline and have to have to pay. But that's just how it works. Right. Thank you. That's great. And I think the more um, automated mechanisms that you can have in place, the better. So you can set up a, a sequence where when somebody starts to work with you, you can have those emails in MailChimp or Aweber or whatever email system you use, you can set it up so that it goes out two weeks before the deadline, a week before the deadline, and it's just an automated reminder email, so it's not taking up your time. Um, you might have to do a little bit of personal chasing, but the more automated it can be, the better. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. I hope that helps. Absolutely. Uh, Kristen Smedley. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So I, I love the batching idea, and I actually was watching your interview with Kelsey Humphreys, and you talked about how you, now I thought I was a, a batching rock star because I figured out a couple of months ago I would only have to wash my hair, you know, once every couple of days if I put a bunch of videos on. I just kept changing my shirt, right? And then I saw that you did like a whole year of videos in, yes. in what, four days or something crazy? That's right. Yeah, so I'm not the rock star anymore. You totally are. <laughs> but, and then on that note too, I had a whole series of these blogs that I was going to be putting out after the election. I do a, I run a, a medical eye research organization. I have two hats. That's my one big hat. And I was doing these blogs all on Hillary's past support of disabilities and all this stuff. And I was like, oh shit, I need all new, I need all new content. Now I have to flip that whole thing. So that's when when that didn't necessarily work out that great for me. But, and I was able to just pull some stuff out and plug in all that stuff. But my biggest question, and this might be a goofy one, but this is one of my hardest things because I'm so, I don't like to say disorganized, but I'm very creative and not necessarily in a very organized way. Um, what kind of schedule do you, how do you keep your calendar and all of your stuff? Do you use your phone and paper? Do you have a group thing? How do you keep yourself and all of this stuff so together? Yeah, so I am the kind of person that still needs paper, which is why I created the planner. But what you'll notice in the planner is that in my weekly layouts, so if you look at a layout for a day, it's not broken down from like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So all of my actual scheduling of appointments would go through my Google Calendar. But I like to use paper for the bigger picture stuff. I like to be able to jot down um, like there's a running to-do list for the upcoming week. There's a weekly reflection. There are um, places in here to, in the weekly layout, manage your projects and your deliverables and your receivables in your business and from those that you're working with. Those are things that I love. I love having the whole week like this laid out on my desk. And then Google Calendar for all of the smaller like appointments and nitty gritty stuff. We use 
Um, Basecamp for anything that is design related, I find that it's a lot easier when you're sharing a lot of files. So Basecamp is how I organize my design and development team. And then everything that's project related, we use um, Asana for. So when I'm talking about having thousands of tasks set up for the year, all of those are tasks set up in Asana. And we'll usually get a lot more specific quarter to quarter. So in a quarter, we'll look at the tasks coming up for that quarter. We'll make sure that they are assigned to each person. I'll make sure that there are notes associated with the task. Um, if it's something that I need to comment on or give feedback on. And those are really the tools that run our business. Um, we're starting to use Slack more for the day-to-day -day stuff, um, day-to-day -day communication between the team. But it's really just my, my 